Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim. Today we're talking about ways to treat pigmentation. So with pigmentation, there are different types. We can talk about melasma, which is very common. That's what we call hormonal pigmentation. We can talk about sun damage. So things like, for example, age spots, sunspots or pigmented sunspots. And then there are other forms of pigmentation, such as freckling. And most importantly, after acne, you will get some post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. All of these forms of pigmentation have something in common. That's basically an excess of melanin. Your body's immune system or your body's cells called melanocytes respond to different inputs. And that input could be, for example, inflammation, secondary to acne, or it can be secondary to hormones or even light. And what happens is that these cells produce what's known as melanin. And this results in dark spots. So whatever the cause, it is very important to treat the primary factor. So we understand that, for example, UV will make uh, pigmentation worse because it stimulates pigment cells. If you're using blue light, for example, whether you're using uh, BBL or blue light source, that can actually make pigmentation worse because it activates the melanocytes. Now, part of the treatment is to understand the cause. If it's acne, what you want to do is treat active acne. If it's hormonal pigmentation, that's difficult because if you're talking about melasma, we don't want to actually remove the hormones, but what we could do is to protect your skin from various stimuli. And the most important stimuli is UV. Now it's a little bit complex because different types of pigmentation will have different bands of UV, visible and infrared light that may stimulate pigment. So to cover everything, dermatologists advocate the use of sunscreen and it's understanding the correct amount, which is basically a minimum, a minimum of half a teaspoon application twice a day. So obviously if you're out in the water, if you're exercising, if you're sweating, Sunscreen does not stick as well. So what you need to do is reapply. Now, when it comes to skincare ingredients, and this is very important, skincare ingredients, there are certain things that are scientifically proven to work and to be beneficial. So for patients with pigmentation, when you see a dermatologist, generally speaking for dermatologists, we prescribe you, um, for example, hydroquinone. Now, hydroquinone is the most potent pigment inhibitor, but it has side effects and you cannot be on it for longer than four to six months. So what we want to do is we want to stop the hydroquinone before it stops working. And what we have to do is use what's known as a tyrosinase inhibitor. In other words, a pigment blocker that is not based on hydroquinone. So for patients of mine, and you've known my prescription patterns over the past four or five years, you know that my go-to ingredient is meladerm. Now, meladerm contains certain key ingredients that will help with pigment. First of all, it contains arbutin, alpha arbutin, which is basically lab synthesized. So arbutin is a very potent pigment inhibitor. It also contains azalic acid, which is both anti-inflammatory but also a very potent inhibitor of tyrosinase. It also contains niacinamide, and as you guys know, it's B3, which not only establishes barrier function, but also is an anti-inflammatory with pigment inhibitory mechanisms. Ascorbic acid or L-ascorbic acid is a very potent inhibitor of tyrosinase. So it's very, very beneficial for that. Another thing which they use is kojic acid and also licorice extracts. So these key ingredients are very important because they do not contain hydroquinone. And finally, botanicals. So we're talking about mulberry, bearberry, and a whole heap of other pigment inhibitors which are based on plants. Now, your dermatologist or your skincare expert will get you to start on meladerm, and generally this is how we do it. We start you off possibly two to three nights per week, increase as tolerated. Because it does not contain hydroquinone, it's absolutely safe. And the other thing as well is because it has less irritant chemicals in hydroquinone, 
your transition from hydroquinone to melodherm is going to be a lot better. You're going to have less irritation. So generally speaking, what you want to do is to start slow and then slowly introduce this, whether it be one extra night per week or two to three times per week, and then slowly increasing it, both application during the day, for example, twice a day, morning or, or night, or you can incorporate that with your other skincare actives. So for example, you might want to use an antioxidant in the morning, for example, L-ascorbic acid or ferulic acid, and then melodome at night. So just to summarize a couple of key points. First of all, when we talk about pigment, what we want to do is to find out the cause of the pigment. Secondly, we want to treat the cause. Thirdly, you want to protect your skin from various stimuli, including UV exposure. Fourth, that depends on what your dermatologist or skincare expert wants. But sooner or later, if you're using potent things like hydroquinone, you've got to come off that. So this is where melodome comes in handy. Once again, be guided by your skincare expert. Thanks for that.